Welcome back everybody. I'm Bear with bearindependent.com and to in today for Refuge Medical in our ongoing series about the March algorithm, massive bleeding, airway, respiratory circulation, head injury, hypothermia, and everything else. And TCCC, Tactical Combat Casualty Care. Today we're doing the H in the March algorithm, which is head injury and hypothermia. Again, as always, I would encourage you that this is not instruction. It's simply information, and please don't conflate the two. Instruction means you're doing it with your own hands, with qualified professionals leading you through a series of problem solving. This is information, hopefully to spur you on and motivate you to go get proper training from any qualified trauma medicine professional. We, of course, provide that at refugetraining.com, but there's lots of other good trainers out there as well. Go check them out. So today, head injury and hypothermia, I'm gonna go ahead and take my bear fact. This is the bear fact from Refuge Medical. It's called bear fact because I came up with it and I came up with it because the standard Marine Corps Infantry IFAC is garbage and I wanted something better. And so we have the bear fact is prioritized based upon care. When you pull this out of the outer pouch, which looks like this, you pull this out of the outer pouch. This can be opened one-handed and we've got our massive bleeding right here. We've got tourniquet, gloves, and a pressure bandage right here. We've got tape, we've got a Sharpie. So massive bleeding. We have our airway and respiratory module in the back. We've got our EMT shears, nasal pharyngeal airway. We have a burn dressing because this is a common thing in battlefield injuries. It's also a common thing in civilian injuries. So we've got a uh, burn tech dressing here as well that we've added in the 3.0 version. We've got two big five, uh, five by nine gauze pads here because when you need big gauze, you need it now. I don't wanna go digging for it. And then we've got our two chest seals here, high fin, full size vented chest seals for our airway and respiratory module, right? And so prioritization of care, we need massive bleeding stuff first. This is 90% of our problems. Then airway and respiratory, this is another six or 7% of our problems. And then we get into circulation, head injury, hypothermia. And that's this module down here in the bare fact. So when I pull this out, I've got my quick clot rolled gauze right here for wound packing if I need it. If we're dealing with, um, you know, injuries to the pelvic girdle, uh, the hip socket, stuff like that. That's where I really like hemostatics. And so I've got my quick clot right here as well. And then in this super heavy duty zip top bag, I've got the stuff that I need for head injury, circulation, head injury, hypothermia, everything else. And in here, I've got compressed gauze for wound packing. I've got my, uh, we call them a burrito blanket. It's a Mylar blanket. I've got a roll of rolled gauze here or Curlix. I've got a triangle bandage, a linen triangle bandage. I've got an eye shield. I've got small gauze and big gauze, including an iPad. I've got fold flat duct tape right here because it sticks to everything, including blood, sweat, and tears. I've got some uh, disinfectant wipes in here. I've got a bunch of different stuff in here for treating the remainder of the March algorithm. And so this is the part here that I'm interested in currently with the bare fact, because we're talking head injury and hypothermia. And so if we open this up, get our survival blanket out, we need that. I've got BZK wipes here, which is just a disinfectant, okay? Get my compressed gauze out my rolled gauze, my duct tape. I've got my triangle bandage and my eye shield. And I've got another five by nine gauze pad here. And I've got some, uh, an iPad here that goes with the eye shield. I've got two two by twos here and I've got two four by four gauze pads as well for minor injuries, you know, minor lacerations abrasions, cuts, you know, stuff like that. I do want to point out the reason that we uh, included a dedicated burn dressing in here is because burns are highly susceptible to infection. And so anything that you, you use on a burn ideally is sterile. And you also want it to be moist. And so these are like super moist. You can use a, a petrolatum gauze as well. Uh, but when you apply this, you want it to be moist because otherwise it's going to stick to the wound. And when you remove it, you're going to remove skin with it and that's going to suck. Um, it also has a cooling effect when you apply it. 
and these are sterile because the largest organ that your body has is your skin and you don't want to get an infection on a burn. It's a really big deal. And so anything you're going to use for burns, make sure they're sterile. North American Rescue makes uh, a whole bunch of these different size burn tech dressings, which we include in a number of our different kits, but they also make sterilized triangle bandages for specifically for dressing burns. And so you might look into that as well. So let's talk about head injury and hypothermia. So for head injury, ideally, or predominantly what we're gonna be talking about are lacerations, not ideally, none of it's ideal. If we have to bust this kit out, we're, the situation is no longer ideal, okay? Uh, we're gonna be talking about eye injuries and lacerations to the head. Head injuries bleed like stuck pigs. Uh, there's a lot of capillaries, a lot of small blood vessels in the head, and they just bleed a lot. So typically what we're gonna do is if there's a flap of skin, we're gonna put the flap of skin back and we're gonna use our gauze, whether it's this rolled gauze here or our triangle bandage, and we're gonna hold that in place. We do not apply pressure to the head. Repeat, we do not apply pressure to the head. The intracranial space inside of here, it's filled with fluid. If you apply pressure, that causes a lot of problems for the brain. And so we just, just enough pressure to hold it in place. If you can, use tape as well to put that skin back, hold it in place. We had a law enforcement officer who came on scene with one injury that a gentleman's skull, he was riding a motorcycle without a helmet and his skull was cracked open. Uh, he said he was able to see his gray matter. By the way, thank you to all our law enforcement officers out there, EMS and our firefighters for doing the job that nobody else wants to do. It is a very thankless job and we as a nation would be screwed without you. So to all our good law enforcement officers, our four constitution law enforcement officers, EMS and firefighters, first responders or sheriff's departments, we appreciate you very much. And I, I mean that truly, thank you for doing your job because you men and women see stuff that uh, most people never have to see. The average human being has one to two critical events in their lifetime. The average career law enforcement officer in a career of 20 years witnesses 700 critical events. So thank you for putting a badge on, putting the armor on and coming to work because even as screwy as our nation is, it would be far worse without you. Appreciate you. So this law enforcement officer rolls up on this wreck and had his skull split open. He can see the guy's brain. He just closed it back up and the guy's screaming. Of course he's screaming. Closed it back up, wrapped it up with gauze. Let it be. That's what you do. You cover it, you, you use the gauze to create a separation in between the injury and the nasty world. This here is compressed gauze. We open up this compressed gauze here, like so. It comes in a little brick. When you get in a little brick like this, kind of work it back and forth. It's been vacuum packed like so. You can pinch it and start to get it out like so, okay? And you can take this and wrap this around the head. I know I'm about to look like the Karate Kid, right? But you can wrap it up like so, not tight, but just enough pressure to hold it together, okay? And there's 12 foot of this gauze in here. And if you go ahead, Mr. Cameraman, zoom in on this. You see how much space there is in that, how much surface area that is? This stuff is great for wound packing. We also use this for wound packing because of the capillary action, just like your fancy paper towels suck up moisture, this does the same thing, the capillary action. This is a six ply compressed gauze from North American Rescue, but you can use it to wrap injuries. Another uh, thing that you may encounter with a head injury is an injury to the eye. And so there's really two categories there with the injury to the eye. Um, trauma to the eye or embedded objects in the eye. If there's an embedded object in the eye or anywhere else in the body, if we can, we leave it in place. We don't remove it, okay? We leave it in place. In that case, we'd take our tape and we would tape the object. If you had a stick poking out of your eye, you would tape the object in place so that it doesn't move, okay? And then we wrap up. And by the way, we cover this eye and this eye. The eye that doesn't have an injury, we cover it as well. And the reason for that is our entire lives, 
Both of our eyes have been tracking together at the same time. Okay? If you have an embedded object in this eye and you leave this eye open, every little bit of movement, everything that's going on, this eye is going to move. The right eye is going to move. The left eye wants to move with it because they're a team. They've been working together their whole life. And so that can exacerbate the injury and create a whole bunch of pain for the casualty if we don't cover the other eye. And so we highly recommend that you cover both eyes if you have an eye injury so that you're not getting sympathetic pains and you're not exacerbating the existing injury. When you do that, you've now created a situation where you have to babysit this casualty. Somebody has to stay with this person because you've effectively blinded them. You're responsible for them. You laid hands on them, okay? And all this stuff, again, is covered by the Good Samaritan Act, but you blinded that person. If we're near a roadway where there's been a motor vehicle accident and this person has lost enough blood that they're disoriented and they get up and start walking around and they get hit by a car because they're blind, that's your problem. So if you blind somebody, you also have to babysit them, okay? But cover both eyes. We have an eye shield here, okay? The eye shield with the eye pad we have an injury to the eye, we can apply the eye pad, apply the eye shield, tape it in place. I like to get my kids uh, super excited. I say, hey, I got you an eye pad today. And they're like, woo, eye pad. And it's one of these. And they, they don't appreciate that joke very much. But um, you apply the eye pad, apply the eye shield, take your tape. And as you can see, it sits out from the face so that there's no pressure on the eyeball, on the ocular nerve, okay? Then tape this in place. Just a big old honking piece of tape to hold it in place. And then wrap it up with gauze. Put a layer of something in between the injury and the nasty, nasty world out there. Whether it's this Curlex rolled gauze or it's this compressed gauze or it's the triangle bandage, whatever you may have. So eye injuries, pretty basic stuff. Um, obviously, there's going to be light sensitivity as well. That's something to think about with an eye injury. Um, the last of which, with head injuries, we're going to talk about, again, because it's a contraindication, meaning don't do it for the application of a nasopharyngeal airway, one of these, a nose noodle, is a TBI or traumatic injury to the maxiofacial region, a compromise of the structure of the nose and or mouth. We don't want to put a nasopharyngeal airway in. Um, and it's unfortunate, but depending on the type of casualty you're dealing with, sometimes the human face is not even recognizable. Well, in that case, don't try and put a nasopharyngeal airway in uh, because the bone structure, the cartilage structure has been compromised and we don't want to go poking the brain with the naso. We want the naso to go up and in and down, not up and in and up. Okay. Uh, and then clear viscous fluid running from the nose, again, is deeply indicative of a traumatic brain injury. And as always, we should be elevating to a higher level of care. But as you're doing your triage, as you're working your patient, working the casualty, by the way, casualty doesn't mean dead. It means injured or dead. And if they're dead, there's nothing we can do for them. And so that you're clear, a patient with no pulse and no respirations is in fact dead. Let me repeat that. A patient with no pulse and no respirations is in fact dead. You need to take your time and take your resources and move on to the next casualty and hopefully buy them some time until a higher level of care gets there because all this stuff is in the hands of the father. We're just buying the casualty time. That's what we're doing. Uh, to the extent that we're saving lives, we're buying time for the father to operate. So, Maxiofacial injuries and traumatic brain injury, if there's clear viscous fluid running from the nose, we don't intervene with a nasopharyngeal airway. Um, that's head injuries in a nutshell. They bleed like stuck pigs, man. Get gauze on them and uh, keep them wrapped up, but not, don't keep them too tight. Now we go into uh, hypothermia. This thing is like two bucks, this little Mylar blanket. It's not expensive, but it's super important. We call these burrito blankets. If you think about a burrito you get from the gas station, the warmest it's ever gonna be is the moment you pick it out from underneath the heat lamp. These don't generate heat. They retain heat from the casualty. It's super important. For every one degree drop in body temperature, the clotting factor for the body doubles. So at 98.6, it takes about 10 minutes to form a clot with direct pressure. 
at 98.6. At 97.6, it takes 20 minutes. 96.6, 40 minutes. 95.6, 80 minutes. You just catch my drift here. And we don't want people to bleed out and die. So it's super important that we keep the blood inside the body so the body temperature doesn't drop, so that we have good coagulopathy, so that we form clots, so that we don't bleed out and die, okay? So hypothermia is really important. We wanna keep the casualty warm. It's one of the, there's a direct correlation between the body temperature of the casualty and their survivability rate. This again is one of the things that we've learned from the global war on terror and the March algorithm in TCCC, tactical combat casualty care. So this is not a throwaway, it's actually really important. So after we've intervened with tourniquets and pressure bandages and wound packing, and we've established a patent airway, and we've made sure we have good respiration, and we've uh, rechecked the casualty during the circulation phase, and we've called in Casavac or Medivac, and we've addressed head injuries and we're triaging the patient, then we get to hypothermia, at which point, because we've checked for secondary wounds and wound methodologies, during our examination of the patient in the circulation phase, now we're gonna cover them up with a, a burrito blanket, okay? This does not add heat, it just keeps the casualty warm. And it's super important, hypothermia is a real thing. Another thing that we can do is if the casualty is laying on a concrete floor or on the ground, well that sucks heat out of the body. And so if we can move the casualty without causing further damage to them, we want to put any type of insulative layer in between them and the surface that they're on. You know, uh, homeless people can tell you that sleeping on cardboard is better than sleeping on concrete. Okay? So anything, whether it's jackets or blankets or towels or t-shirts or cardboard or whatever you may have, if it's getting them up off the ground onto a sofa or a couch or onto a bed so that they stay warm, we want the casualty warm because, again, hypothermia is part of the lethal triad and we want to buy as much time for the father to work to preserve these people's lives as possible. And so, super important, not a throwaway. We definitely need the burrito blanket. When we apply the burrito blanket matters. That's why it's the H, hypothermia, in that algorithm. And we work the March algorithm in the order of importance. Massive bleeding first, extremities with tourniquets, junctional areas with pressure bandages and hemostatics and wound packing gauze, then airway, then respiratory, then circulation, including our casualty checks and calling in Casavac and Medivac, then head injury, and then hypothermia. I hope this is making sense to y'all. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for being along for the ride. Please share this out to any educators that you know, anybody that you think needs to see this, church security teams. If you're new here, please subscribe, click the little bell icon. Thank you for supporting our American-made small businesses, Refuge Medical for the kits, Refuge Training for the training. Uh, I wanna save as many people's lives as possible. And I'm hoping that this information, again, will motivate you to go get proper instruction. Bless y'all, shalom.